Good morning guys. What's going on with everybody on this fine morning? Coming to you from Kansas City, Missouri. Hope everybody's doing good. I've got me a beautiful but windy day today so we're gonna go for a little ride and I'm gonna talk about a couple things I've had on my mind today should be fun first I'd like to thank everybody for subscribing and uh, watching I appreciate it thanks for liking the videos and I appreciate all the uh, all the uh, momentum that my channel's gained over the last year you know I think I'm coming up on just in August it'll be a year of making YouTube videos and I want to thank everybody uh, while I'm talking about it if you're new here it only takes a second go down there and hit the subscribe to ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss another video while you're at it leave me a comment say hi introduce yourself that take recommendations for videos anybody wants to see but uh, just leave that in the comments down there thanks guys I appreciate it for today's video I would really like to talk about something I've uh, most of uh, most of my regular viewers know my story but uh, I'll go over it for those of you that are new. I'm uh, 53. I uh, rode a little bit as a, you know, teenager, just a little bit. You know, my brother and my dad were really into it, so I had access to some like dirt bikes and that kind of thing growing up. You know, learning how to ride. I was a, an, an avid bicycle rider, and I rode. Uh, uh, in college, I had a, you know, I don't know, that five, seven, eight hundred dollar bicycle in back in the 1980s. So, I mean, I was really into biking. Of course, I played sports and that kind of thing. So that was always my first love was baseball and golf. But to stay in shape and and to you know, with some friends in college, we used to go ride bicycles around Lawrence, Kansas, which is a real hilly area and. Uh, we got into writing so that was a lot of fun but uh, I'd never really you know went back to the motorcycle um, or a motorbike of any kind so I had a daughter you know at the age of about 30 you know and my dad and my brother were really into motorcycles at this time you know that was back in around 2000 and they had each, I think they each had a gold wing and they were always like, hey, come on, let's go, let's ride. And I was, you know, just, you know, I've got a new baby at home. I don't wanna, I don't wanna jeopardize that. You know, I've gotta be here for her, that kind of thing. But, you know, fast forward to here, I'm in my mid, you know, early to mid fifties and riding, you know, and it, riding a scooter you know I want a new motorcycle you know my wife tells me that this is a midlife crisis and you know I don't know if it is or not maybe maybe this is exactly what a midlife crisis is I, it doesn't feel like a real crisis that's the thing I'm I think it's midlife but we all we all hope when we get to, you know, 53 like I am, you know, we hope that's midlife. You never know though. It could be end life, right? I mean, no days are promised to us. We're never promised, you know, another day, another week, another month. We don't get promises like that. So all I know is getting out here and riding is just serene and honestly I, I don't feel like taking risks I 
I know it is riskier being on two wheels than it is on four because you're not surrounded by a metal cage you know and it, it is more dangerous there's no doubt about that but I certainly don't ever feel like I'm gonna be a risk taker you know I, that, that's not what I'm into this for there's no daredevil riding going on on, on my scooter or, you know me wanting a new Triumph motorcycle that's that doesn't have anything to do with you know being more risky or daredevil type antics I like going out just me in the road and uh, just being being alone with your thoughts I feel like it's just good for your mental health to get some alone time Riding's really something I wish I would have got into back when I was 30. Back when I was 30 years old. That's just something I was thinking through my mind. Not really a regret of mine, but maybe that it would have been nice to spend a little bit more of that kind of time with my dad, my brother. My brother's gone now. He, uh, he died in 2016. And, uh, I was always really, really close to my brothers. You know, that we had a bond that, you know, was just unbreakable. You know, as we were growing up, we always valued uh, each other and family. And I don't know, I kind of kind of regret not spending more time with them when I had the chance. We did spend a lot of time together and growing up all our kids were super close and you know anymore I think we've kind of let politics you know get in the way. My family's got you know people on both sides of the both sides of the fence you know as far as politics go and you know I I keep a level head you know about that kind of stuff but I've always uh, you know known that blood was thicker than water right and you know you don't talk about politics if it's gonna just upset people yeah why bother you know spend time with the people you love while you got them but you know my dad my brothers they've squabbled over politics and my sister and they've all of them have went through times when they weren't talking to each other but uh, I've always kind of played the peacemaker and 
you know, to, hey, let's get together, but let's not talk politics, all right? Let's just get together and hang out, that kind of stuff. That's always been my role. And uh, I think talking politics is overrated. <laughs> There's no discussion that's really going to change someone else's mind. I would say 99.9% .9 of the people have their mind made up and they're not changing it for anyone. There's not one chance you're going to change their mind out of a thousand. No matter what they see. No matter what events happen, no matter what's in the news, they're not going to see it. So why bother? Why bother? Maybe this is what a midlife crisis looks like, but it's not much of a crisis. You know, I, I feel like it's more of a... opening of your eyes you know an awareness that you know maybe your maybe your life is half over more than half over maybe it's 90% over i think it's more of a getting wise than a midlife crisis I don't feel like it's a crisis at all. I don't feel like I'm in some kind of a panic to get out here and do something I've never, you know, done. I don't feel that. I feel like it's much more of a understanding that there are things in your life that you know hold you back and keep you from doing the things that you wanted to do when you were younger and of course most of us as we get older you know we can have a little bit of money in the bank you know not be millionaires but you know, be able to rub two cents together, you know. I remember a time when that wasn't the case, you know, when I felt like there was no extra money. You know, when my little girl, my she's 23 now, when she was little, I remember a day when we went to the zoo in Topeka and... It was all I could do was to come up with money for a train ride, which was like a dollar and a quarter. And we had a family zoo pass. So, you know, we, are, we could get in already. And I had enough money for both of us to get on the train and ride and a large drink for the both of us. It was like a dollar, okay? So we're talking a dollar fifty times two and another dollar. So I've got four bucks. And we went and we're getting ready to get on the train and she dropped her drink after we were about out of you know five hundred yards from the drink stand five minute walk maybe and I couldn't go back and get her another one that's how broke I was that was at 30 years old so I've been there I know how it feels to be poor you know but You know, got past that now. 
times have changed made a lot of smart decisions and just lived a lot of a lot more years you know met my new wife you know we've been married now for going on 13 years and life's changed a lot you know I've, I've been blessed and I'm really thankful for those things but Life can change a lot, you know, in 10 years. I would say, you know, if this is a midlife crisis, then this is the way to do it. I hope this is midlife, you know, I'd love to have another 50 years, 40 years. When I met my wife, you know, we told each other we'd spend the next 50 years with each other. And I was, ho I was hoping that was true, you know, I'm, it, hopefully we've got another 40 left, or 37 as it would be since we've been to get the 13 now. I hope to have another 37 years with her, but if I don't, I'm not gonna have a lot of regrets. You know, I, I feel like we've done some wonderful things and I'm ready to keep on living, honestly. And, you know, riding's a new, a new part of my life and she does it with me a little bit, you know, she hops on the back of the scooter and we tootle around the neighborhood, you know, we both put on a helmet and ride around in our shorts and t-shirt, you know, just riding around, you know, this little neighborhood right here, never going faster than 25 miles an hour, and that's a nice time to spend with each other, but... If this is a midlife crisis, guys, I'm happy to be going through it, and uh, I'm happy to bring you all along with me. Guys, I appreciate you watching. And uh, I'll be back again real soon with another video. My next video, I am planning on changing my oil and doing all my maintenance on my Vespa all right so that'll probably be my next video all right guys thanks for watching subscribe if you're new here and you haven't already if you're already a subscriber I appreciate you watching and thanks guys leave a comment say hi tell me what you think about midlife crisis and uh, if they're avoidable or if they're just something to be uh, welcomed, like I have mine. So, guys, I appreciate you watching. I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.